What's up, y'all? My name is JR, and for those of you who don't already know, I'm a huge movie and TV nerd. If you're new here, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my channel. I hope you'll consider sticking around and joining the film community I'm trying to build here on YouTube. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving my quick recap, reaction, and review of the first episode in Season 2 of the Apple TV sci-fi dystopian drama series, Silo. And just so you guys know, this video will contain mild spoilers, so if you haven't gotten around to watching this episode yet, and you don't want to know anything that happens in it, you might want to exit this video now. And with that being said, no more wasting time. Let's get into it. Silo is an American-made science fiction dystopian drama television series created by Graham Yost, based on the Silo trilogy of novels entitled Wool, Shift, and Dust by author Hugh Howey. Set in a dystopian future where a community exists in a giant underground silo comprising 144 levels. It stars Rebecca Ferguson as an engineer who becomes embroiled in the mysteries of its past and present. Now, development on a film adaptation of Wool began back in 2012. But by the end of the decade, the project was shelved and was later picked up as a series by Apple TV in May of 2021. Principal photography began in August of 2021 and the 10 episode first season began streaming from May 5th of 2023. Now, the series has received positive reviews from critics, particularly for the world building, production design and for Ferguson's performance. In June of 2023, the series was renewed for a second season, which premiered. Today, in fact. Now, at the time of the making of this video, season one of the series has an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 68 critic reviews with a popcorn meter that currently sits at 66% based on 2,500 ratings. Now, season two of the series currently has a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 20 critic reviews, and it currently does not have a popcorn meter score as of yet because, again, the season is premiering today. Now, season one of the series has a meta score of 75 on Metacritic based on 20 critic reviews with a user score of 7.0 based on 90 user ratings. Season two of the series has a meta score of 79 percent on Metacritic uh, based on nine critic reviews. And it does not have a meta score um, uh, or user score as of yet due to the limited critic reviews and user ratings. And finally, the series has an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb with just over 140,000 ratings. So look, the first season of this show went about like I thought it would, given the setup. And I'll admit to you guys that it took me a while to get around to watching the whole thing. Um, I just thought this, the the show was kind of um, it was it was mid, right? Um, but it, it it did go like I thought it would, with Juliet becoming sheriff and investigating the death of her former lover, uh, George. Um, in the process and kind of becoming um, consumed with finding out what happened to George, even um, at the cost of dere uh, you know, dereliction of duty. Right. She kind of put some of her duties as sheriff to the side specifically to find out what happened to George. Um, and at the end of the season, um, we do find out that George indeed committed the act of self deletion, just like judicial said he did. Um, so I did think that was rather interesting, right? Cause you know, you're watching the season and you're saying to yourself, well, you know, what's true and what's not true. It's either one or the other, either George was murdered or he committed the act of self deletion and you tended to go with murdered because that's how these shows typically go. But this show did subvert expectation. And we find out that George actually did jump, uh, from a ledge. Um, and that's how he ended up dead. Uh, but what made me excited for the continuation of this story um, was maybe the last five minutes or so of the season one finale, wherein, like a lot of people, I'm sure I learned that I had it wrong the whole time as it pertained to the overarching uh, story beats of season one. You see, I thought the whole time that both Allison and Sheriff Holston had it right, that outside was survivable and that for some reason, for whatever reason, those in charge inside the silo simply wanted to keep everyone inside the silo. But we ended up seeing that not only was the outside toxic, but that it was the helmets in the hazmat suits that projected the mirage. 
you know, the sunny day with the birds flying and chirping and that kind of thing. Not the screens inside the silo. And that the reason every person who left the silo cleaned the lens um, was because they thought that what they were seeing inside the helmet was what the outside actually looked like. And they wanted those inside the silo to see what they saw. Um, and, you know, on top of that, we also learned that there are other silos all nestled in the ground in one big cluster, um, which I did not fathom uh, before that point. And again, like I said, that is why I kind of had a reinvigorated excitement about what season two of this story could be like. Now, the first episode of the new season entitled The Engineer starts with what appears to be a flashback to the goings on in one of the other silos wherein two factions go to war, uh, primarily because the people don't believe the lies of those in charge. So they kill them for the right to go outside. We then see Juliet, Juliet, excuse me, on her walkabout, you know, through the desert, uh, the wasteland, that is. And she happens across this particular silo and she sees that all of the people who went outside after that war perished as a result. Uh, now, she manages to find her way inside that silo and she also manages to close and seal the door behind her. Now, we see her in flashbacks as a child meet new people. Um, in her original silo and get used to her new life down in mechanical. Now, I don't know what any of that has to do with the present situation, you know, but OK. Now, we also see her um, shed her hazmat suit and her helmet just in time to avoid suffocation. And then she explores the dark and seemingly empty silo uh, until she finally gets signs of life. She follows the sound of music until she reaches a vault and she tries to open the door. And at that point, a man appears peering out of the glass from behind said door. And he warns her that if she tries to open the door again, that he will kill her. Cut to black. Now, guys, look, this episode, I have to say it was dreadfully boring and not at all what I expected. And, and I'm saying this as a person who has no problem with um, minimal dialogue. But I mean, the writers try to break the monotony of this episode by infusing uh, the episode with flashbacks that at least at the moment, I feel, um, you know, they feel extremely inconsequential to the story as it pertains to its forward movement and only seem to serve as a means of including some actual dialogue in an hour long episode wherein Juliet spends it 99 percent of it all by herself. Um, if not for these flashbacks, Juliet would have gone through the entire episode and not a word would have been spoken until the very end where the guy basically threatens her life if she tries to open the door again. And I just think that's really ambitious for an hour long episode. And so, again, like I said, it feels like the flashbacks other than the original flashback that kind of show what happened inside the new silo was maybe the only one that was necessary. Um, narratively speaking, now, I think that the the other flashbacks to her as a child don't really mean much. I mean, I, I guess I reserve the right to change my mind after we get a few more episodes, because I think we know pretty much everything about Juliet's childhood that I think we need to know um, we got last season. And so it seemed to me like these flashbacks were just, you know, the writers going, well, somebody's got to talk at some point. And since there's nobody in this silo for Juliet to talk to, you know, at least until the very end of the episode, that's why those flashbacks all exist. And, you know, narratively, like I said, it, they just they just don't hold a whole lot of water to me at this particular point in time. But again, like I said, I reserve the right to change my mind as the season progresses. Now, overall, I give this episode a 60 percent or a 6.0 if you're thinking IMDb score. Now, you know, look, a, a six might seem, you know, low or 60 percent. But I always tell you guys anything higher than a five is still is still, you know, good television or a good you know film uh so 60 percent is kind of where i settled on this episode um because again like i said i just thought this episode was so dry and look guys i was truly interested in seeing where this story would go after the revelations of the season one finale but even though it's just the first episode of a 10 episode season i have to say that i'm not all that optimistic about this show being able to hold my attention you know, as appointment viewing for the next two and a half months. But what do you guys think? Have you had a chance to watch the first episode of the new season of Silo? 
If you have, did you find it as boring as I did? Let me know in the comments. And for those of you that might be new to the channel, be sure to like and share this video. If you really like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I drop a new video. You can also support the channel by leaving a super thanks. If you should be so inclined, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to go and check out themadscreenwriter.com for more television and film reviews, and as well as info on my upcoming film projects. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I got screenplays to write, and I'll catch you on the next video.